Hard hog. Um. <laughs> There's no guarantee that this will ever see the light of day because the last, God knows, three or four times I've done it, tried to do um, a talking to camera pickups video. Um, I've I've watched it back because that's my that's my um, my filter system. I watch it back, and I'm and uh, if it doesn't irritate me or piss me off, um, it, it passes muster. But um, the last few times I've just gone no, it's got no enthusiasm for it at all. <laughs> so fingers crossed. Oh, I used to, oh, fingers crossed. Um, <sighs> Um, there's a few, I've, I've written a few notes because there's a, there's a few little stories to tell but nothing major. Um, I've been going to the car boots, one of them is car boot related actually. I've, no, I've been to two car boots, last two Saturdays, yesterday because today's Sunday, might not get uploaded today but today is Sunday and last week as well. But, um, yesterday was better than last week, put it that way. Um, I might just crack straight on with it because um, otherwise I just shot a video actually and I tried to be quick and it was relatively quick for me and I felt slightly more fulfilled. <laughs> I felt like I'd achieved something for doing a, a video that was less than 20 minutes long. Um, actually I, I think they are, my video, my response is relatively shorter than other people's which is remarkable. But anyway. A couple of non-gaming related stuff to start off with. Um, I've got to whiz through these. Uh, the Hangover. Just because I've already wanted to see it, always already wanted to see it, always wanted to see it, but never been able to. And it was only a pound. And it was uh, supposed to be good. If anybody's seen it, they let me know what I think. Um, this was less of an impulse buy because I just when I saw this in a charity shop, I jumped on it. It's the final, the final um, series of The Wire. This is. The Wire is brilliant across all five series. It is brilliant. In com you compare it to a lot of the other televisions out there. It is fantastic. It's sort of a slow burner. It's, it's like it's like all the the best films, television, music, books. They're all slow burners. You have to put the time in to get something out, and this is exactly the same. It's along that you know. The, it, um, I think it was affected by the writer's strike because I think this was written, it was, it was created about the same time as the writer's strike. So it's, it, um, it's about half as long as previous series, and the, the central idea of the plot is a bit weak, but it's still it's still fantastic. It's still far and away better than the majority of the other stuff out there. Um, uh, there's a, a few giveaways about. The situation that it was created, there was um, it's slightly disappointing. There's one section where one of the characters, I've got another, um, Griggs or Gregs, I always forget her name, what her name is. She's um, having um, a baby with her, her um, civil partner, and she, because uh, it was actually her partner who had the baby. I think she was artificially inseminated, so she. This the character uh, Greg's or whatever. <laughs> she feels sort of slightly, um, sort of slightly. She's almost like take the, the father's role because this baby is not is not um, naturally hers. I think, and she, and she gets a bit sort of depressed. Well, that, that's slightly relevant to the point. Um, but she she, uh, she goes out and buys um, a crib or a cot for this baby. And the main character, what the fuck is his name? <laughs> I forget his name. I always think he's called Malarkey, but that's the character from um, Band of Brothers. I have watched this more than once, but I'm just shit, shit with names. But he goes around to see her, and she's making this cop. And she's making this cop, and uh, he, he, he sort of just as a sort of an aside, he goes, where, where did you get that from? And she goes, oh, I got it from Ikea. But it's so obvious, and it's so sort of like staged, it doesn't really fit. It looks a bit like product placement, but the, the, way, the way they dealt with it is because she's having trouble putting together this cot that she's got from Ikea. So almost they were, it's almost as if they were contractually obliged to say that 
to mention the name IKEA, but as an as a sort of a side swipe to that, they emphasise how difficult it is to put together. It's almost as if they were reluctant to to have to mention the, the IKEA name, so to speak. But it was part of the con contract. I don't. That's how it felt. I might be totally missing the point, but that's how it felt. And which which isn't really the sort of thing you get in the rest of the series of the wire, but it's totally rewarding. I mean, you have to start from the beginning and work your way through, and otherwise you won't get the full the full effect. It is brilliant. And the only one I'm missing now, and actually my favourite series, is number four. So that's just this is good. This is good. But anyway, um, that's the the only non-game related stuff. And this was actually I forgot to mention this in my last pickups video, the one with all the stills. Don't know why I didn't mention it. Um, I think because I was taking photographs and somehow it missed. I missed it out. It's um, a Toby Two on the Xbox. Um, this was uh, with this was only two quid. This was with um, CX credit. I really enjoyed the first one, and this is supposed to be pretty much more of the same, but with a bit more variation and more controllable characters. And uh, this, uh, I think, this and its um, precursor are um, sort of sleeper hits, really, along the same lines as the sort of Devil May Cry, that that sort of style of game. But um, hack and slashes, like third person hack and slashes, just brilliant fun. So that was two quid, um, right? Now this is all the stuff I've bought since the last pickups video. Some, some boobs. I've made some boobs. I say boobs, boobs. I like saying um, <laughs> boobs. Um, a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, quality-wise, not pretty good, but a bit of a mixed bag in general. Um, I'll start off. I'll start off actually with um, a couple of these are all charity shop purchases, but these are the the main two boobs. But I'll let me just move this around. The main two boobs. The first one is Project Zero Two. This is actually not the case it came in. Project Zero Two. I was out and about having a mooch. I went into a charity shop. It's been pretty barren. Pretty barren, you know. I've got sick of going into charity shops and seeing nothing. But I went to a charity shop, and from from right over the other side, I saw the spines. I saw the spines. So you, straight away, you know, it's a load of the PS2 games. And I got close, and they were they were a good selection of games. They were all um, PS2 uh, uh, survival horrors. But downside, um, all bar one. Don't know if you know, all bar one. They've got Spanish and Italian on the back. <laughs> Spanish and Italian on the back. There you go. Spanish and Italian. Spanish and Italian. Italian. But the game actually plays in English. It's just literally the, uh, it's literally the, the cover art. Well, the fronts, the fronts in English, and the spot and the, the the names in English. Um, the cover art and the manual are in Spanish and Italian. But you can actually um, change the, um, change the language. But um, I bought this, I've already got it, I bought this because it was 99p with the idea that I would trade it in because I'm trying to build up some CEX credit to get a PSP, um, although that might go by the wayside if I can get a PSP some other way so I'll have a load of CEX credit for nothing. Um, I, I was going to trade this straight in, uh, I took a bit of a gamble because I wasn't sure if they'd take it because this was the best one because they had... Silent Hill 3 and 4 and Clock Tower 3 and they're not necessarily the best. This is the best game as well. And this one would have got the best credit, but I wouldn't take it because it's the barcode. They always have to scan the barcode, don't they? And this is the, the barcode's different, so it's not in their system, so they can't take it. I think I tried it in two different places and neither of them would take it, but um, I did explain that it plays in English, but they still wouldn't take it. But So this will probably be up for trade or for sale. I suppose I could change the case, the case is a bit knacked. It's actually in really nice nick, just it's in Spanish and Italian. So if anybody speaks Spanish or Italian now, that's probably the game for you. This is the bigger boob. It's not a massive boob. <laughs> massive boobs. It's not a massive one. It's just a minor one. I got a bit greedy. Got a bit clever. Thought. 
something took me by surprise. I'll show you what it was. It's this. This was in a charity shop, Darwin 4081. A Japanese shooter, Japanese Mega Drive shooter. I saw it on the shelf. I thought that's a, you know, on the VHS from a distance, and then no, it's not. It's a Mega Drive game. It's a Japanese Mega Drive game. Looked to the front. It's a shooter. And uh, um, in my head, I thought, ka-ching. <laughs> I thought oh, things I don't know too much about Japanese Mega Drive shooters. I know I know that like, some of them can go for ridiculous money, but then, but then that that's applicable to most games in most genres and most. Um, most uh, consoles, isn't it? But I took a punt. I'll tell you what, I'll show you what actually the, the, the main debate is it's six quid. I mean, who's gone into it? Who's ever gone into a charity shop and spent six quid on a Mega Drive game? Not many people, but and I just got I just got a bit carried away, got a bit, um, got a bit greedy. I thought I'll take a punt, six pound punt. This could be um, eliminate down. Things I didn't know it wasn't Eliminate Down. I couldn't remember the name of Eliminate Down. But it's, it hasn't even got its manual. It's got a receipt. My receipt. <laughs> Don't that. This. There you go. It's actually not bad, Nick. It's, uh, it's got a bit of a tear there. But I came home and I thought, it's going to be big bucks. Big bucks. Woo! -hoo. Then it wasn't. <laughs> it's worth about what I paid for it. It's worth about probably less. So, I might just ship this off five quid all in if anyone wants it. Anybody into a Mega Drive shooter? It doesn't even look the best Mega Drive shooter. I just, I did actually, I did have a bit of a debate. I was there, for, stood for, for ages. I must have looked proper mental. Stood there for about half, not half an hour, it's an exaggeration, but a good, you know, a long time in this charity shop trying to mull it over. They probably must have thought I was a bit bonkers, but. I should have trusted my instincts because my instincts were, were to ignore it but then I would never have known well I could have gone home I could have gone home and looked it up because I don't have um, I don't have a phone that you can look stuff up like that you know I'm not sort of I'm not a techno geek in that sense sounds coming out um, so I just took the gamble because I knew it it probably wouldn't be there next time and this it was a charity shop I don't often go to it's sort of like probably once a month or something like that but so I took the punt. Uh, it, you know, I shouldn't lose out, but <laughs> I mean, you, you'd expect to pay about six pounds on eBay. I just got greedy. I think, Owen, you twat, you amateur, leave it to the professionals. <laughs> you knobbins. Don't don't try and don't try and stretch yourself. Don't get cocky. Bob was. I got a cocky, and you know, but still. It wasn't much of a boo, but it's still, I don't like to make mistakes. <laughs> um, charity shop stuff. Yeah, charity. This is the rest of the charity shop stuff. To go with um, to go with Project Zero. This is the one game that wasn't. Um, oh, it's actually a pound. The one game that wasn't um, wasn't in Spanish or Italian. There you go. Not that you're going to say that, but it was um, Forbidden Siren. That was a pound. So. Um, it's supposed to be pretty good. Probably not as good as Project Zero, but it's got that that Japanese staple of uh, creepy ghosts and um, creepy little kids, like loitering in corners and stuff. That you see, I, I blame um, I blame the Ring the film, the Ring, in the same way that you can blame Saving Private Ryan for in, informing the aesthetic of of thousands and thousands of video games ever since. I blame the Ring. For all the majority of um, survival horror games ever since, so. but it's supposed to be good. It's supposed to be good for a, for a pound, and it was you know, it looks good. It's not. It doesn't have. The, I don't think it has the same interesting um, combat mechanic that you get in Project Zero. So I make these mouse like uh, And this was another sort of slightly expensive um, charity shop purchase. This was another one that I thought long hardened about. It's long hardened about Mario Kart Double Dash, but which I've already got. I've already got Double Dash. The interesting thing about this is that it's the uh, the one with Zelda in it. And normally I bought I bought and traded in probably about three or four copies of Double Dash. Probably more than that. It's probably about four copies of Double Dash, maybe five. 
just for the credit because it holds its value and you always get a good eight pound credit for this but um, I wasn't going to get it because it was five quid but then I realised it had the Zelda, it was the one with the Zelda in it if anybody tell, can tell me, does it, is it supposed to come with a Zelda manual? Because this one doesn't, it's just got the double dash manual. But Now the debate I'm having now is whether to keep this as part of a novelty, because I've already got both Zelda and double dash, or move it on. Because there might be someone out there who, could, who has the um, has the, uh, the, game, the special edition GameCube pack, but doesn't have this... And it's actually in really nice, really, really nice nick. All bar, annoyingly, that. I don't think that's... <laughs> Look at this fucking song. That's the only downside, that little flap. That's what I need. I need, I need one of those reflector things they have in film sets. So this would probably be... I don't know whether to keep it or not. Because it's a novelty, that's all it is, is a novelty. I don't tend to keep those for novelties, but it's, it's, you know, it's worth, it goes for a lot on eBay. It goes for a lot more than, a lot more on Double Dash especially. But it might be a keeper, I don't really know. Um, that's all charity shop stuff. I'm going to move on to, move on to, this is CX stuff. Uh, this is Lunar Genesis, this is random purchase because it's, um, I've got a uh, Lunar Legend on the uh, the GBA, which I enjoy. This one didn't have brilliant reviews. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck it. This one didn't have brilliant reviews. Um, why come out now? Um, it's this weird gameplay mechanics, like you can't target enemies, specific enemies in combat and running in the game lowers your hit points which I don't really understand but it looks like a standard RPG and I've said in the past certain people like certain games and I like RPGs and certain people always like games in certain genres regardless of the quality and I always like I like RPGs whether they're poor or whether they're good and, I, and at least I'll give them a shot I'll, I'll get something out of them. I might not necessarily enjoy them to the fullest, but I'll get something out of them. And this is an example of that. Lunar Legend. Lunar Genesis, sorry. It was only £3.50. Which, I mean, I would really like to get the other Lunar games, but I don't have a game that can... I don't have um, this machine that can play properly play um, import games. But that, that's, that's a, just a, an ambition. I wish this sun would piss off. <laughs> um, I don't know how to deal with it. This is one of the reasons, it's one of the reasons why I made the last video how I did, you know, with the stills, because I don't have this, I don't have this problem. And this one, this is another CX purchase, this, is, this has been on my list for a long time. Scourge Hive. This is a sleeper hit. It's, you know, it's sort of shadow there. Hold it like that. Scourge Hive. For two pounds. This this is a sleeper hit. This is a this is a hidden. I don't like saying hidden gem. It's a bit of a cliche. I much rather say sleeper hit. But you know, this pretty much means the same thing. Um, <laughs> I look like um, Marlon Brando in um, sort of weirdly lit Marlon Brando in um, Apocalypse Now. That's not like this. So you can't say I'm as of a fat bastard I am. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so Scourge Hive, this is essentially like an isometric, it's a bit better now, it's going in. This is essentially like a, an isometric version of um, Metroid. It's a, essentially a Metroid game, it's isometric, it's, a, it's an isometric shooter, but it's uh, it's probably more em emphasis on combat than Metroid, but with the same sort of gameplay mechanics. Um, you you don't, don't really hear about it. And I've forgotten where I heard about it, and it's like it's one of those games you hear about, never heard about it before, and then you look it up and oh, that looks interesting, and then you, you look up um, reviews and stuff. And um, this one has got decent reviews, it's about a sort of 70% job. Um, it doesn't really get the plaudits it deserves, I think. Um, 
one, I think one of the, the only downsides is because it's on the DS and um, it really would benefit as far as um, combat is concerned because it's an isometric 3D shooter. It would benefit from having analog sticks to control the direction. As it is, it's only eight way, eight way fire. It's sort of old school eight way fire, like um, not Commando, Commando, Akari Warriors, or any you know all those games, those isometric shooters. Like Akari Warriors is only eight way fire, which is problematic. You would think, you would have thought that, um, you would have thought that games would, would have moved on from that now, but. I think as far as the rest of the game is concerned, it's really good. I've played a little bit and it is, it is, it is sort of living up to what, what I hoped it would be. And it's only two quid, it's, it's worth about two quid. Don't pay any more than two quid if you can find it. There's a, there's a, a copy in a, in a cash, cash generator near me that's been there, for, been there for years and they're asking 12 quid for it and it's not moved because it's not worth 12 quid. But I think CEX have got it for about the right price. You should, you should might be able to get this on eBay for the same price. Um, right, that was a charity shop. Hang on, this was a charity shop. Charity shop stuff. This is in charity shops. Crash Bash. I've, I've actually got um, I've actually got a platinum version. This I don't it's not platinums, so this was a, a no-brainer for me. This was um, two quid. In I don't know why I'd take the price off. I know I didn't. I've taken the price off because there was never a price on it, so it's two quid. Um, Right, where am I going to now? In a, um, in a game, Mega Man Powered Up, I've been slowly collecting PSP games with the intention of getting myself a PSP. And I haven't yet got myself a PSP. That's why I'm um, building up CEX credit. Maybe I'll get a PSP from CEX. But, but I don't often see this around, and this was eight quid. I'm not averse, I'm pretty averse, not averse, I am pretty averse to spending eight quid on random games. But I wasn't sure how good it would be. It, I was hoping it would be more like the um, the X titles, the more, slightly more arcadey rather than cutesy platformer. But it actually looks pretty good. Because um, I've, I've obviously not been able to play it. I can only like watch gameplay videos. But it turns out that 7 is a bit of a bargain but it was a bit of a punt at the time and when I eventually get a PSP I'll tell you what, how good it is <laughs> um, <laughs> right uh, okay, next one first from Cash Converters uh, Super Paint Mario Super Paint Mario for £5 pounds. Um, I've wanted this game for ages this is when I very first got my, um, got my Wii this was one of the first games on the list, and um, I'm really. I, it came out with the the you know the um, the what do you call it the um, greatest hits version, which I'm not interested in that. But this it's not too expensive now. I mean, it doesn't hold its price in the way that other Mario games like do, but it has dropped slightly. But Still, a five which seems to be a decent price. I think normally you're generally seeing around about eight quid. There might be about that, or maybe a bit more in CX. But. And I saw this in cash generator, cash converter, sorry, and it was a really nice nick. So I thought, I love that, as you do. But uh, on the way out, I thought I'll just take a sneak peek at the disc. <laughs> and the disc is fucking mashed. <laughs> It is knackered. It's like, oh, it's sort of like this you look at and you wince. And things by that time, I think I was on the bus, so I'm going to have to pay bus fare to go back. Because I'm being a cheap bastard, I'm not prepared to do. So I'll either pay the bus fare to go back and get it cleaned, or take it to, um, take it to you know, a computer exchange and get it cleaned. But, um, I thought I'd at least test it first, but it, and it works, it does work, so. <laughs> I'm surprised, because it is fucked. I just wonder if I'm going to show you. I might be able to see this in this. There you go. Oh, there you go, you can see it. it surprised me, actually. It surprised me, you can actually see that. See, there's a big one along the top, can you see that? Horizontal one. And it, but it works. 
So the, the only debate in my mind is whether or not I can live with this looking like that aesthetically because the game functions as it should. It's just, I, I'm, a, I'm not a neat freak. I just don't like it looking like it's been, you know, abused. <laughs> I couldn't think of another analogy. <laughs> uh, I think it was at the same time as that. Was, this is a nicer one. Conquer Live and Reloaded. Um, that was not one ninety nine as well, uh, which I actually have. But I know I've got a, a normal copy, but I will be nicking this case because I've got a, um, a case of a game coming up which needs needs changing. So I will be nicking this case. So this will be moved on. Maybe salty people on good YouTube or good people on YouTube, or if the people on eBay, if I can be asked to deal with the piss takers. And this is the game where we're nicking the uh, the Conquer case. Is this? It's um, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. I actually have this, but my copy is only disc and manual. It's, it's in just a bare Xbox case. And this was again. This was one ninety nine. So I was missing a sleeve. I bought this for the sleeve. So I'll be taking the sleeve. I'll be taking this case because the case is in at the moment upstairs is a bit knackered. And I'll have myself finally a proper copy because I used to have this. This is one of my favourite Xbox games, and I played through it multiple times. I, the sub, every subsequent playthrough became sort of less and less worth it because you can transfer your stats from your first playthrough, so you can start off the game as a rock hard bastard, and it just gets really ridiculously easy. But then, but then there's um, there's a, an unlockable game which is probably worth worth playing actually. Which, which is just so much harder than the actual game itself. But So I'll be n just nicking the sleeve and the case out of that and probably the disc, disc so I think the disc might be okay. And the manual. I'll just, I'll just put, myself a nice, put myself together a nice copy. <clears throat> um, that's the rest, all, the, all, the, all that's left is eBay stuff and car boot stuff, because I did actually get something from the car boot yesterday. A little story about the um, car boot last week. Car, the car boot near me, it's, it's, it's not massive, it's in a school playground. It's in the playgrounds and there's a few, there's a, just these little offshoots and stuff, it's generally in the playground. So it's never going to be massive, it's, it's quite constricted, it's, it's only ever going, to, ever going to be as big as the space they have. It's not in a field, it can't just spread out miles. But, um, and it's supposed to start at 8, I used to get there at 8, I never really used to see much, I thought, I always used to see people coming back out. I thought, if people are coming back out, surely they must open earlier than eight. So ever since then, I've been going there at half seven. Still not really seeing much. Till last week, um, I always go in the same, it's like a school gate. You don't have to pad get in. It's literally so the school gate's open. Last week, I went in and I always go off. There's one little offshoot that always goes off to the side. So I went in, walked down there, and there's always this, this mad bastard who, live, who works right sets up right at the end, this, this old geezer with his purple face who's like really sort of angry and grumpy and gruff who sells um, just random shit like uh, leaded windows with coloured glass and stuff like that. <laughs> but that's um, this, uh, this This guy I'd never seen there before, was setting up a stall and I was looking at his stuff and there was a few people standing in front of his stall and I was having to look to the side and right, I happened to look to the side and I saw a Game Gear just sitting there on the top. And I'm not too bothered about Game Gears. Then I saw it said Fiverr on it, he had a label on it. Then I saw this, this pikey looking bloke like, stood in front of it and, and he was it, he didn't have his hands on it but I thought it looks like he was gonna, he was interested. And then he opened up this little case, I zipped it open and there were shitloads, shitloads of Game Gear games in there. And he was sort of looked for it and he went, you, know, you want a Fiverr for this do you mate? He went, now nah, give me three quid. So, <laughs> so this this pikey looking bloke, who had a bike, he was wheeling a bike with him. Pikey looking bloke, uh, took a Game Gear and a shitload of games for three quid. And I've not seen anything like that worth having in, in a car boot sale for for donkey's years. Because he's pretty poor generally, and I it was just pissed me off no end to miss out. And I, then I, from that point on, I realised that this guy was my competition. Maybe it was him. 
who'd been um, taking all the good stuff. That's why I never used to see good stuff. Maybe it's this guy. So I thought to myself, ne I'm going to go next week if the weather's right. So I'm going to go next week and I'm going to get there half an hour earlier. I'm going to get there at R6. But um, was it seven? No, seven. So I, I was just going around the car boots out and he was, he had his bike with him. He had a cigarette on and a beanie hat. He was just proper irritating, pikey looking bastards. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> But the thing is, I know I know him. He doesn't know me, so I'm already I'm already one up. He's my competition, and he doesn't know that I'm his competition. So, so that's that's my to my advantage. But um, I essentially, I essentially, I could see what he was doing because he was he was walking around as fast as he could just to do one circuit to see if there's anything worth having so that he could lay his hands on. But um, I wouldn't say he was he was one of these sort of resellers in the classic sense. He was just some weird, like irritating, scavenging bastard. That was after the same stuff as I am, and maybe that's why I'm, I hate him more than I should. <laughs> but um, but no, I, I, I could see he was walking around as fast as he could, and, and I think yeah, then he then he went and stashed his bike, and then he did a slower circuit normally, as, as you do. But um, I went down a different aisle to him, and I saw a woman. She had a copy of Kill Zone on the PS2. It was a metal books, the metal book version, which you don't often see, or rarely, so I don't think I've ever seen one before. I don't think they're really worth much, but it would have been nice, and I would have had it for a pound, but I asked her how much, and she, I think she wanted, I can't remember she wanted, she wanted, she, I think she might have wanted a fiver for it, or three quid. But it, it was worth, it was more than I was willing to pay, and, and also just by the fact she was asking this amount, it was a starting point and you, it gives you an indication of what a mindset is and I thought I can't be asked to deal with someone who's, who's got that sort of mindset I want people to give me stuff for dirt cheap <laughs> which is all essentially what we all get pissed off about isn't it if someone doesn't give me give me it for standard standard car boot prices but, but no and so I left it and it wasn't there next time around and I, I bet my money I don't know I've done this for certain but I bet my money the pike looking black nabbed it after I'd rejected it and that sort of pissed me off because I thought to myself after that I maybe want it more. So anyway, so I went yesterday. I went yesterday. Sorry, got there half an hour earlier and he wasn't there. But then I, I didn't see anything on the first circuit and then I saw him and he turned up. He was there later, but I didn't see anything on the first circuit anyway. Even though I'd sort of got up, sort of off my ass to to go early. <laughs> But I, I did see something on the second circuit, and uh, nothing major, but it was a nice couple actually, and he was looked like an experienced car booter, but he was he was just telling me about how he couldn't be asked to deal with eBay and just wants rid of these stuff. So, and I was going, yeah, eBay bastards, aren't they? Too many piss takers. And he was going, yeah. And, uh, he told me apparently eBay own Gumtree now, do they? Does anybody know? He knew that eBay owned PayPal. Apparently, eBay owned Gumtree now, which is, I bloody hope not, because then they've got they've definitely got a monopoly on this sort of game. Right? But um, no, he had Game Boy games. He had five. I took three, and I said how much, and he said well, one fifty. I thought oh, that's fine. I'll have, they're worth one fifty. But then his girlfriend said, no, we were going to ask a pound for them. So even better. So they gave them to me for a pound. And this is a Pokemon Blue. Me and this game have got a bit of a, a bit of history. A bit of a Pokemon snob. Generally, don't. I'm, I've mentioned plenty of times in the past. Generally, don't play them. I'm determined to eventually give one a go once, on one day. But I've I did buy a copy of this from a cash converters last year sometime, and it turned out to be hooky. So I wasn't going to pass that up. I was going to get my revenge on this fucking game because this one's legit. <laughs> and uh, slightly yellowy, but that should clear up. It's Castlevania Adventure. And the best one, all for a pound each, um, Zelda Link's Awakening. Yeah. And he, um, he actually took one of the other games out of the case and gave me the enemy case to put around this. So, not tested them, but it was, it was, it was nice, it was nice, refreshing to meet some people who can't boot so who weren't def immediately defensive when you ask them how much their stuff is. Because you get a lot of that, don't you? People who are a bit like suspicious about what your motives are. And, and this guy just wanted, you know, um, just wanted rid of his stuff. So, so you know, it was, it was sort of good for me. Um, last two things, only two more. I, I won't waste any more of your time. Um, 
Tell me what to go first, I'll go first, I'll go this one first. Um, bid on this game, this is a game I used to play on a demo for a long time. Just played one one game on this demo, one level on this demo. It's uh, Parable of the Rapper. And uh, I've wanted the game ever since. I'm shit at car, um, car boot sales. I'm shit at car boot, what the fuck does that mean? I'm shit at rhythm action games. But this one's just got that, that wacky Japanese just presentation that's just really sort of draws you in, doesn't it? From a Westerner's perspective, it's so interesting, this sort of presentation and the, the humour and the style. But um, this one's been going up recent, like steadily over recent years. And I think generally they go for about 15 quid now, maybe even a bit more on a good day. Well, I got this in auction. And um, the, the description wasn't brilliant, and I ended up getting it for £8 plus about £3 postage, so £11 in total. So it's pretty good. And it's all there, and it's, got the, the, it's all in really nice nick. It's got the, the um, it's, it's a poster, it doesn't have a manual, it comes with a poster. Although I have actually seen one since with a manual, I didn't know that you could get a paraphernalia wrap a manual, but they might even be, it might even still be for sale now. I don't know whether that's an interest, anything interesting or unique or what, but I just didn't know Power for the Rapper manuals existed. Maybe it's a, an, um, an Australian import or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, yeah, I paid, I paid my money straight away. And it's, although it didn't, the payment didn't go through, and it was, it was still, um, it was still unclaimed. It said unclaimed, and I realised that the, the seller had um, missed on their their PayPal email address, obviously everyone uses an email address for PayPal. They'd, they had a Hotmail address, but they'd missed the dot between Hotmail and Co. So it was hotmailco.uk, whereas rather than .co.uk. So that was holding it up. So I ended up having to send it directly to this um, email address, which I was a bit dodgy, like suspicious about. But it went through, and it came through, and it was really nicely packaged. So that was just the slightly, it was a bit suspicious, but it... It paid off in the end, it paid off, so I'm, I'm really chuffed because this is, I've, I think I've probably, as far as my list goes, I've got this top about six or seven games that I really want and then there's a few I'm below that and then, the, and then there's just like a bottom list of games that I'm a bit, you know, not too bothered about. This is one was in, in right at the top, this is in, the, in the top six or seven games I would really like to get. So, so I'm extra chuffed and I'm, having got that, I, I was thinking about getting um Jam and Lammy as well, but I'm not sure I really need to get both of them. Oh, I don't know. And not that I'm asking your opinion, but well, no. If anybody has played um Jam and Lammy, how different is it from Power Up of the Rapper? Is it that different? I don't know. And this one, finally, oh, Jesus, I won't. I won't beat forty minutes. Sorry, sorry, it's going to be this long, but I won't beat forty minutes. This is another eBay purchase. This was two ninety nine. It was um. On auction, um, starting bid of 99p, I literally put in one bid of 99p, nobody bid against me, and postage was two quid, so I got for 299. And it's a sequel to a game I bought about last month called um, um, No One Can Stop Mr. Domino. It's called Minon Everyday Hero. <laughs> This is one of those games that is it's, it's quintessentially Japanese. Everybody knows what I mean when I say that, don't they? It's, it's so wacky, it can only be a Japanese game. I'll put a video in the, in the, a link to a video in the description box below, and you'll, you'll get an idea. It's in J Japan, it's called Go Go Minon. In, bizarrely, in America, it's called Domino Rally, which doesn't really give much away. It's a bit too self explanatory. But basically, you're this little dude on the front. It goes around helping people, and I, from gameplay videos, it's quite difficult to know what's actually going on. I think they use the, the Wii pointer to to um, to to set um, to set dominoes along along a track or just an area, and he runs along on top of the dominoes, and then you get to certain areas where he where he, he automatically. Oh, it's quite difficult to explain. <laughs> Just watch the video. Um, there's one vi there's one video. It's really funny. It's got a really good sense of humour, and normally that sells games to me. 
there's one, he goes to the zoo, and there's an elephant in the zoo, he wants to chat up this other, other elephant, this, this girl, girl elephant, he wants to chat her up, but he's, he's, um, he's a bit nervous and he's a bit embarrassed. And to make it worse, there's some pandas there, standing watching him, taking the piss, and he's putting extra pressure on him. So he asks Minon to go and sort out his pandas, and uh, to basically get rid of these pandas so that he can go and um, he can go and chat up this lady elephant in private, and that's essentially <laughs> that sounds bonkers, and it's that's what it is. It is bonkers, but I mean, you look at games like We Love Katamari, those sorts of games. How wacky they are. This is more of the same. And just look at look at the look at the, the, the video in the description box in the link, and you'll you'll get an idea. But there you go. Uh, I'm over 40 minutes, so I'm going to cut it off as quick as, as quick as I can. So, um, thanks for watching. I'm going to try and put up. Um, oh, fuck okay. it. I knew I'd forget that. I, sort of, I was going to intentionally forget those, and then I did just actually forget them normally. But <laughs> Pete Snestastic, um, I, I've mentioned to him in the past that you used to be able to get used to be able to get uh, mailing boxes from um, from pound shops, not p shops, until they stopped doing them because they were too good. Not, they weren't cheap and nasty enough. <laughs> I do, I do normally, I do, I'm quite, I do run for leisure. That might, this might not seem like it, but I do. <laughs> I have actually, I've actually been for a run already today, so you can forgive me. The, the out of breathness. Um, yeah, they've got um, boxes like this, a pack of three for 99 for a pound. So, so this is in pound land, so you can get these. They're about. They're pretty sturdy. Then the downside is they're not as well made as the last batch. But I've not seen them for years. I think I, I sent a, a few games to people. I think I sent something to Alex over in America, and it was a really sturdy box. And these aren't as well made. The, the cardboard's a bit cheaper, but they're um. They're they're worth it. They're better than nothing, and with an extra bit of like tape along all the. And all the sites, they would definitely be worth it for people who want to send things like um, things like uh, SNES games, box SNES games, or anything that could get crushed. But and they've got bigger ones, bigger ones. This is supposed to be eight centimeters, which is the the limit for a three pound postage. But I'll bet it exceeds that if I ever tried to go and send that for three quid, because that wood should go for three quid, because that is eight centimeters. I bet they'd, they'd try and argue with me if I went to the post office because it's probably exceeded by a millimetre or something. But there you go. From Poundland, if anyone's got a Poundland near them and you need, you want any like mailing boxes, they've got them. Although they're not as good as the last the last batch I used, like I bought um, probably a couple of years ago. I've not had any for years, so so that's added an extra three minutes onto my video. So I'm just going to say bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. There's going to be that's what this was about. There's going to be I'm going to try and put up a sales video because I've got a shitload of pretty decent stuff, and some of this will be included in it. So, thanks for watching. Apologies for the for the duration of the video, and I'll catch you later. Look out for the upcoming videos. Cheers, peeps.